Okay, in this tutorial, what we're going to learn how to do is we're going to learn how to connect our Bubble application to our N8N account. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to run any type of automation that we can dream up uh, within N8N. Or if we're working with some type of AI agent, it will allow us to interact with those AI agents as well. So this could be really as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Now, I want to mention just one thing before we jump in. I'm actually going to split this video tutorial up into two parts. Uh, the first part, I'm going to cover the uh, process of injecting data into NADN. So for example, here, we need to have data coming in to our workflow in, in some way here. And then in the second part of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to uh, take a response, whatever response you get from N8N, and then pull that back into Bubble. So this is an optional step, uh, and it will require a little bit more of an advanced understanding of how to work with Bubble, but I'm going to cover them both uh, in this tutorial. So for example, if you're doing something really uh, simple, like just taking the results of a form input, and then what you, you want to do after that is just add those details into a Google Sheet, well, then you you'll only need to watch the first part of this tutorial. But if you want to inject data into N8N and then do something with that data and then have it spit back out something else and then pull that data back into Bubble, then you're going to have to watch the second part of the tutorial. So let's just jump in with the first part because it's uh, relatively straightforward. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over to your Bubble application here and you're going to have to go over to plugins and you're going to need to look for our N8N automations and AI agents plugin. So again, you can just go up to add plugins and you can just type in, for example, N8N automations, and you'll see it here. Just make sure that it's the one by us, by Nebulum, and then click on install. Now, once you have that plugin installed, we can begin work. There's really no API code or anything like that you need to add. So we just simply go over to our design tab. And what we'll do here is uh, I'm on the plugin page and I've just added three different inputs here. So I've added the webhook URL, the data that I want to send over, and then I just have an input field for the response here. So you can add three input fields onto your canvas here just to test this out as well. So what we'll do here is we'll click on this button for send data. You'll need to obviously add a button to this page as well. And then what we'll need to do is we'll need to click on edit workflow. Now there's really just one step involved here. And then we need to just set the state based on the results of that one step. So to set the first step, what we need to do is we need to click on this little plus icon and then we just need to search for n a n and then you'll see this option for send to N8N. So we want to click on that option. Now I'm going to delete this because I've actually already added it up here, so we don't need to add two. But what you'll see is a properties panel, which looks something like this. It's going to ask you for your webhook URL, which is really important. This is where we're going to be sending the data to. And then it's going to give you an option of sending up to 15 different values into N8N. Now you can use no values. You don't need to send any data. You could just, for example, need to ping uh, N8N in order to uh, start a workflow of some type. But in most cases, you are going to at least want to be sending one item of data over. So here in this example, I'm just going to be sending one piece of data over, but I could send up to 15 things over to N8N. So let's just jump over to N8N. And what we'll do here is we will add a step into our automation here, our workflow. So what we'll do here is we will search for webhook. And you'll see this option here for webhook. And it says start the workflow when a webhook is called. So we're going to select this option for webhook here. And then once we have that added, it's going to show us a test URL, which we can use just to test to make sure that this is working. And then below here, you'll see the option for the method. And here it's set to get. We'll want to go ahead and we'll want to change this to post. Now, once we have that changed to post, what we'll want to do is we'll want to take this test URL and we'll want to just copy it. So if you click on it, it should copy that URL here. Just make sure that you're on the test URL here and not the production URL. So once we're on the test URL or we have that copied, we'll just jump back over into our application. So the very first thing you'll notice is that I have my webhook URL here and I have the value that I'm sending here. And essentially these two values are just being mapped. If I was to go over into my front end here, my design tab, the webhook URL is coming from here and the data to send is coming from here. So let's just put in some sample data here. So what I'll do under initial content is I will just paste that webhook URL right here. 
So this will be the value that's being used for the web hook URL. And under data to send, we can just type in anything here. We'll just type in under initial content. We'll just type in a name. We'll type in something like John. And then what we'll do is we will click on send data again. And then when we click on edit workflow and we click on our step one, you'll now see that these two values actually have data to send. So if I was to just hover over here, you can see that it has that URL, which we got over from NADEN. And in the value one here, we can see that it's mapping to the value John. So it should be sending this data now over into NADEN. So let's just test and make sure this works. So if we were to go over to NADEN again, you'll see this option for listen for a test event. Let's click on this option now. So now once we've clicked on this, anytime this URL gets pinged, we're going to have data come in to NADEN. So let's just see how this looks. Let's go over into our application right now. And what we'll do is we'll just preview our app. And now once the page is loaded, I can go down here. And as you can see, we have the URL here and the data to send here. And let's just quickly click on send data. And then I'm going to jump back over to the NADEN tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on send data, jump over here, and we'll just wait for that event to come through. Okay, so as you can see, the responses come through, and the very first thing you'll notice under the body is that we have under value one, this result, which is John, which is the data that we wanted to send into NADEN. So now that we have this data, we actually have something that we can work with now within whatever we want to do next within NADEN. So if we wanted to use this value to do something like, um, for example, create a new row in a Google Sheets database, we could do that. If we wanted to use an input, for example, if the user sent something um, else and they were doing something, for example, like they wanted you to create some type of large language model output for them. So they sent you in a prompt. You could then use this prompt to do any type of kind of AI wizardry you wanted within your next step. So that's the first part of the process. This is how we get data into NADEN. But now that we know how to do this, let's learn how to get data out of NADEN. So let's just close this down here. Okay, so as you can see, we have this working and now we have data coming into our NADEN automation. But now imagine that we want to do something in the middle here and then have the output of that sent over into our bubble application again. So that's also relatively straightforward to do, but it is a little more advanced. So let's get into that now. I'm going to click on this plus icon here. And what we're going to do is we're going to search for an option called HTTP request. So we're going to click on this option here, which says make an HTTP request and return the response data. So let's select that option here. And then what you'll notice is we have, again, these different uh, parameters that we need to set. So here we have it by default set to get. We don't want to have it set to get. We actually want to change this to post. Now with that change to post, the next thing it's going to ask us is for a URL. So we need to figure out where to get this URL from. So the way that we get the URL, essentially the URL we're trying to send the data to, is we need to go over to Bubble. And within Bubble, if you click on your settings tab in the sidebar here, and then you were to click on the API tab up here, you'll notice this option for enable workflow API and backend workflows. Just make sure that option, that checkbox here is selected. We need to be able to have this enabled for any of this to work. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that you actually have to be on a uh, premium bubble plan in order to use backend workflows. Uh, so that's just another point worth considering. But you won't, I don't even think you'll see backend workflows here uh, if you're not on a, a paid bubble plan. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to click over here on backend workflows. So we'll click on backend workflows. And I'll show you what we're actually working towards first, and then we'll kind of build it out together. Because here you'll see that I already have mine set up. It's called N8, uh, N8N response. And here you can see I have this set up to be able to accept incoming data. So the way that we set this up, the way that we set up a new backend workflow here is we just click on this button for new. We want to create a new option here. And then under general, what we'll do is we'll select this option for API workflow. And then once we click on API workflow, we'll get these options here. So let me just actually close this down because I already have this created as I showed you previously. So if I was to click on NADEN response here, you'll see I just have mine called NADEN response. Again, just to keep things really simple, just copy exactly what I have here. It's called NADEN response. Expose as a public API workflow is checked. This workflow can run without authentication is also checked. Here we have trigger workflow with post type. So just make sure that post is selected from the drop down list here. And then very importantly, we have this option for detect request data. We don't want manual definition. 
So let's select this option here for detect request data. So the question still remains, if we would jump back over into NADN, it's asking us here for this URL. So how do we get this URL? And the way you get this URL is by simply clicking on this button here for detect data. So if I was to detect data, it's going to give me this URL. I can click on the URL to copy it. As you can see, once I do that, it says copied over here. And then I can jump back over into my N8N application. I could paste that URL here. And then what we need to do is we not only need to ping this URL, we also want to send data over. So again, I didn't do anything in the middle of my workflow. I just kind of sent data in. I didn't, you know, I'm not doing anything with like AI agents or any type of automation in the middle. So really the only thing I have coming back in, if we were to look at my first step right here, if I was to scroll down past the headers under my body, you'll remember I sent in this value, which was John. So let's imagine that I just want to send this value back into Bubble. Obviously, you would want to do something much more complex than this, but let's imagine that this is all I want to do right now. So all I have to do is I just have to enable this option here for send body, and then I just have to pick something that I want to send over. So here, for example, we have some body parameters. So let's just go over here and let's just imagine, for example, that I want to send in something and we'll just call it name here. And then under the value, what we'll do is we will just put the value here of John. So that's all we really need to do. So we have this kind of key value pair, which is going to be name and John. And that's all we really want to do. So now I'm going to try to do this really quickly so you can see how it looks when we click on test step up here. What it's going to do is it's going to trigger a call over to our bubble application and it's going to send the data which we've added down here. And again, we could have added more parameters. I could add another parameter here and we could do as much with this. We could send as much back as we want. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to click on this button for text test step. Then I'm going to jump quickly back into my bubble application because as you can see now, my bubble application is listening. It's listening for this event of us sending data back. So let's just jump back over here for a second. I'll click on test step and quickly run back. And there you go, we have it come back. We have the name, which is John right here. I'll click on show raw data. And here you see the key value pair, name, John. So what I can do now is I can click on save. So once we have this data come back now, we can do whatever we want in the next step. So for example, we could create a new thing in the database. And let's imagine that we had this sample thing and we have a title and we wanted to set the title to the name. So we could just say, set the request data's name. So title will be in this case, John. And again, you could send whatever you want back here. If you needed to send this back based on a per user basis, then the only thing that you would need to consider then is that you would need to use these uh, conditions, which are like only when. So for example, imagine this user's ID was one, two, three, we could have sent that user ID in, in the beginning stage. And then we could say only update this user's uh, sample thing if the user's ID, for example, matches the ID that's coming back. So for example, if it's 123, then update user 123's data within the database. But as you can see, it's relatively simple to send data into N8N, and it's relatively simple to pull data back out of N8N and then into your bubble application again. Okay, so just one more thing before we sign off, and that's that if we were to jump back over into N8N here, and we were to hover over webhook, and we were to click on these three little dots, and then we were to click on open, you'll remember that we were using this test URL. Now, obviously, when you push all of this into production, you'll want to swap out your test URL with a production URL. But when you do this, and you start testing for events again, you'll likely get things failing on you. And that's because you have to remember to do a couple of different things. So once you're using the production URL, the first thing you're going to want to make sure that you have is you're going to want to make sure that you actually have your automation set to active. As you can see right now, mine's set to inactive. So it has to be set to active. So that's essential. And the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save any changes that you've made. So just to make sure that your automation is totally up to date and ready to go. Then when you st start sending data in, you're going to be able to actually see that under the executions tab here. So that will be really valuable once you actually start sending data in. So for example, here you can see that I have these different actions that I was sending in earlier. So we could just click on them here. And then what we could do, for example, I know that this one just came in recently. What I could do is I could click on these three dots again, and I could click on open. 
and then we'll be able to see essentially what happened in the past. So I could see we sent this option in here and it came in with this first value as being John and all this is exactly registering as it should be. So I just want to be very clear about that because you don't want to be working in a test environment and then be trying to test something or work in the production environment and then you'll be confused about why things aren't working. So you just have to make sure that if you're in test environment that you know that you're working in a test environment and once you're ready to push into production you remember to swap out all those test URLs with production URLs. So that's all I have for you. I hope you find this plugin super valuable and I hope you build amazing things with N8N and Bubble. Take care.